Howdy y'all, Zach Carell here with the Yak Legion podcast. And I have Justin Lammers here tonight. He is the kayak DIY guy on YouTube. So this guy's been around since 2013. I've been watching this guy's videos. Man, he's got a DIY project or an idea for about any kind of kayak. Uh, just real, real nice guy, man. Awesome channel. How's it going this evening, man? It's going great. Uh, today, I just ended up working on my skiff, which a lot of my viewers know. I was doing some fiberglassing. Uh, so I, I, I am having a blast. <laughs> <laughs> Nice, man. Uh, so let's get to the bottom of all this. Let's get to the beginning. Uh, what made you start your DIY channel? What made you start doing these DIY projects for your kayak? And what was one of the first kayaks you worked with? Okay, so here's a little bit of the background story for how I ended up on YouTube in the first place. Okay. So I was always a nerd kind of like my parents gave me a computer and they said you're gonna run this computer if it breaks you're gonna figure out how to fix it that's how i got into the tech space as a kid gotcha. Prior, fast forwarding into college i actually did a youtube channel on tech uh stuff so i was doing uh basically video tutorials on how to like edit photos how to remove acne and photos all those different things and I had a tech channel that did very well. I had about 5,000 subscribers, and then someone had stolen my channel, actually, which was just heartbreaking because my channel was making good money. Uh, and this was in early, early YouTube. And oh. they, they downloaded all of my tutorials. They re-uploaded them as their own, and my channel somehow got terminated. I don't know. It happened so fast while I was at my other job. And that oh. was the defining moment where I said, well, I know YouTube makes money. I know I can do this. What other things can I show people? And I was out and about. I'm, I'm an outdoorsman. I was uh, working for a gun company. Uh, I, you know, was constantly out fishing. I'm like, you know what? I'm going to make videos about me being outdoors and doing what I do. And it just so happened I had bought a Old Town Vapor kayak. That was the first kayak that I purchased. I got it right out of college. And I bought it because, well, number one, I couldn't afford a bass boat. I was, you know, I had all this college debt. And so I bought this old town vapor. And I'm like, I'm going to make this into a fishing kayak. And so I cut some holes in it. I put some rod holders in it. And I made a video about it because I was like, I always video everything. And viewers saw those videos and they kind of started asking me for more and they said how do you put a hatch in a kayak how do you redo the deck bungees how do you do just about anything and i tried to just give them what they wanted and that's kind of how the channel got start and they kind of just nicknamed me kayak diy and that's the name that i took and just kind of carried it through to a dot-com website and everything else, and I kind of branded it. Wow. So, it, I mean, it, it was basically 2013 was the defining moment or that start where I just started uploading some of my kayaking stuff, and people were receptive of it, and they seemed to want to know more about it. At that time, there was still uh, 30 miles out, Ty and Teresa, they were still doing their videos at that time. Uh, I believe it was Yak in Texas at the time, though, more than 30 miles out. Because um, Ty and Teresa, they have their YouTube channel, and they started out as Yak in Texas, and then they kind of went to 30 miles out as their channel name. So those were some of the channels I was watching hmm. when I was starting out in 2013, and they were kind of my inspiration, along with, like, Marty Zoffinger, um he was another one that kind of inspired me to hey keep working at this you know there's other people that are doing the the kayaking stuff and they're making a living doing what they love and so kind of i didn't want to be them i didn't want to duplicate them i want to take my side of it and, and my style and put it into the videos and my first videos were not great by any means. If we go back, if we go back, I have contemplated several times of deleting them. And everyone tells me, no, don't do it. That's the history of the channel. Just keep it. But my early videos were not great. And everyone that I talk to always says, 
you know, I want to get a start on YouTube, but I'm not very good at editing. I don't have a good camera. And I hear this story for any genre, you know, uh, I mean, whether it be kayak fishing or another genre of a YouTuber, they all are nervous about getting that start. And the thing is, you don't have to be amazing right from the beginning. My videos still aren't amazing. I, I'm just slowly improving. As mm. I figure out new things, I try to give the viewer more and give it, tell that story a little bit better. But I'm far from perfect, my channel is. Uh, so anyone that's looking to do it, give it a shot. Mm. What other advice would, since we're on the subject, what other advice would you have for a YouTuber that's sort of based around the outdoors like we are? What's another piece of advice you would give them starting now? Okay, so you guys might want to just play no. How does a YouTuber make money? I mean, I think that's the question that everyone's going to want to know, and not a lot of people are talking about it because people are afraid that competition is bad. They're afraid that, you know, if too many people do it, I'm not going to have a job. I don't, yeah. I'm not afraid of that. So I'll tell you literally every way I, I can make money doing what I do and, and, and how to kind of get that start. So number one, you need a YouTube channel. You need to get a Google Gmail account. So your Gmail account is okay. your YouTube account because Google owns everything. They own YouTube and they own the Gmail. So you get that account and then you think of a name for your channel, kind of. You want your channel name to be something simple, something easy to spell because the average reading level in the U.S., believe it or not, is around seventh grade reading level. It's about a seventh grade reading level. And I know that because of my other job. And my other job is I'm actually a nurse. And the patient bill of rights is written at around a seventh grade level because that's the average reading level. So keep your YouTube name simple. And so Makes mine sense. is Kayak DIY. Then once you have that name, just start uploading some videos. You can film with your phone. You don't need a fancy camera. Um, most of the cameras on the phones these days are 4K. That's plenty. And so film from your phone. There's great video editing apps uh, for phones that can get you started. There's iMovie for iPhone. It does a pretty good job. If you really dig into it, you can do a lot with it. Um, if you, you know, have a Windows or a Mac, there's plenty of uh, software there that can get you a start. And just, just start. Just jump in. It don't don't do what I had done early on. I was so picky and such a perfectionist that I wouldn't upload unless I thought it was perfect. And then I found out there's no such thing. So start uploading. And then what you can do is once you've uploaded those videos, you can actually go backwards and start making money on them. And uh, that's what I'm going to get into next. So YouTube has what's called Google AdSense. And AdSense is what you see on blogs, websites, and on YouTube channels. And those are the ads in front of the videos that you can skip. Those are also the ads that are on websites on the sides. All right, you were getting into the, uh, how to actually make money on your YouTube channel? Yes, so we were talking about Google AdSense. So Google AdSense is the number one thing that people see on YouTube. Uh, they're seeing the ads in front of the videos. But what many of you also might know is you can't put ads on your videos until you hit a thousand subscribers, which really deters a lot of people from ever starting because that seems like a daunting like number. A thousand yeah. subscribers seems like a lot for a lot of people. And so they never start because they're afraid that I can't make money. I'm never going to make money because I can't get to that thousand subscribers. So the other way you can make money starting with zero subscribers is you start joining some affiliate programs. So Amazon has an affiliate program called the Amazon Associate Program. You join that program using your Amazon login. And it doesn't require any coding knowledge. It's very simple to do. And then once you're an associate, you will have a toolbar up at the top of your Amazon page. 
So when you're at Amazon.com and you're normally surfing and looking for things to buy, you'll have a toolbar up top that lets you create links to products that you use all the time. So for example, if I am using a backwater assassin paddle on my kayak and I'm paddling around and making videos about it, in my video description on YouTube, below the video, I can put a link to that backwater assassin paddle. And if someone clicks that link and chooses to buy it, or if they choose to buy anything, I earn six to 12% commission of everything in their cart. Wow. So that is how you get a start making money on YouTube. You can take this same method and apply it to any genre of YouTube videos. It doesn't have to be kayaking. It doesn't have to be fishing. It can be camping. It can be if you're a, a woman and you want to do makeup tutorials, you can do makeup tutorials. I mean, you can do anything. So Amazon carries just about every product. So that is the great one to start out with. So awesome. that's going to be my number one tip for starting out with zero subscribers and trying to stay motivated is make some videos and don't do the hard sell. Don't tell people buy this product that doesn't work. Show the product being used, be genuine. If you're not genuine, your viewers are going to see right through it and they're not going to be interested in clicking the link. They're not going to be interested in buying what you're showing in the videos. You have to be genuine. If you go in there with the intent of trying to sell them that product, you're going to be like the door to door salesman that everyone hates. Yeah. So you really have to approach it from the standpoint of you're going to make the videos anyway, and you're just showing how your normal day out on the water. And then if you want to see any of the stuff that I'm showing in the videos, check out the link in the video description. You make it very simple. You don't hard sell anyone. Uh, you hard sell them and then they leave and they don't trust you and, and they're not going to be interested in further seeing your videos because it's just not going to be interesting. So I, I really try to find that balance. Um, ultimately, that is how I pay my bills. It's how I pay for my baby's daycare. It's how I'm paying the mortgage on the house here, which I bought this house, which is actually by the water so that I can test out kayaks. Nice. I, I bought this house awesome. like 16. I left my family. I drove 26 hours from where I grew up to move down to Florida to pursue this YouTube channel. Wow. So, I, I mean, it's, it's dedication, it's man. It, it's a lot. It's not easy. I mean, so, I mean, I'm missing out on my nephews back in Iowa. I'm missing out on a lot of things. I gave up a lot in order to hopefully grow this so that I can one day be able to do a lot with it and it's allowed me to have some really good opportunities um so the biggest ways i make money is through affiliate programs and the great thing about that is i can promote any product i don't have to be the the pro staffer in order to get product mm. because people don't trust the pro staffer anymore for the most part a lot of them don't the pro staffing it's it, it, it doesn't do well on social media like social media people if they see your pro staffer they instantly kind of don't trust you with what i do and showing all sorts of different products different brands and then linking to them through affiliate programs i can earn money from any brand so i don't have to show any one brand so i can remain non-biased I can profit from any single brand out on the market for the most part. Wow. By joining affiliate programs. That is the key. That is what every single big YouTuber that you see is doing. Now we can talk about like, at what point do you get big enough that companies start contacting you? Like what was your big moment? That one was my big moment was when I hit 5,000 subscribers Pelican International contacted me. Pelican makes really affordable kayaks for people oh, yeah. on the water. And they saw that I was kind of rigging them up and going crazy with them and having fun. And they said, hey, we want you to take some of our kayaks and have fun with them. Do whatever you want. And they never told me what I had to do with them. They just said, we want to make at least three videos and we want you to do it within a six month period. 
And they gave me kind of a budget to work with too, to be able to buy things I wanted to throw on the kayaks. That was at 5,000 subscribers. So wow. for people to get a feel for at what point you might get recognized, that was the point when I got recognized. <clears throat> so I, I'm hoping this makes sense. It's a lot of information. Oh yeah. Overwhelm anyone. But <laughs> what I can tell people is, I, I can't answer everyone's questions, but they can always try to reach out to me and I'll do my best to try to guide them on it. Yeah. So how did you get five five thousand subscribers? How did you get a thousand subscribers? And that's kind of what we were talking about earlier. So when you have your name of your channel, when yeah. you have that name, take that name everywhere. So yeah. you might need to do a little name research before you choose your name. Go on all the different social media platforms and see if that name is already taken. Yeah. For example, uh, Twitter, Kayak DIY, Instagram, Kayak DIY, you know, Facebook page, Kayak DIY. I take that name everywhere. I get a group which has Kayak DIY in it. What I want to do is I want to have that, that name everywhere. And then what I do is once I upload a video up to YouTube, I end up sharing that video across all of the different platforms that I'm a part of. And that has really helped. For Instagram, Instagram, the big thing is it's hashtags. You got to find relevant hashtags to put in your post. So hashtag kayak fishing, hashtag kayaking, hashtag kayak. So when you make that post, you can maybe share your thumbnail uh, from your video. Yeah. And say, I have a new video uploaded on YouTube. And then put some of those hashtags in there. It will draw people in. They might start following you, plus they might go and click your, your video. So yeah. that's kind of how you get a start. You just you basically share that video everywhere. And the big one, which you and I were talking about a little bit before this live feed, was the Facebook group. So yeah. I'm lucky enough that I started a Facebook group pretty early, and there's people still creating Facebook groups right now. Oh, yeah. Uh, in fact, my, my buddy Ali X, he started a Facebook group just recently as well. It maybe has 200, 300 some uh, members in it. Right now, mine has like 31,000 members in it. Wow. What does the Facebook group do for you? Well, if you have a Facebook group that's branded with your YouTube channel name and maybe you set the cover art to the same as your YouTube channel, um, yeah. if you have that group, then all those members will create content that keeps people coming back. So you're not having to do much more work. You're just kind of moderating it. And a whole bunch of people are going to start creating content around that genre, which would be kayaking and fishing. And what you can do is once you make a post uh, up to YouTube for your video, you share that video into your Facebook group and you pin it to the top of the feed so that all those people 31,000 people see your video at the top of the feed and that's your basically I look at it as that's my payment for moderating a really large group because it's a lot of work you know you got to yeah. make sure that people are themselves and so by by having that group that really helps my videos take off so that that's the big one and i i did that right away i i don't know where i got the little bit aha moment but when i started the youtube channel i bought the dot com i ended up you know I, I did everything i took that name everywhere which by the way if you ever have to buy a website name it's you go to godaddy.com you mm. can buy the name for literally like 10 bucks any name for the most part wow it's really easy and if you ever want to build on that name um, they have uh, software that's like graphics. It's almost like building a Shutterfly book or something. I mean, wow. I don't know about Shutterfly books because my wife builds them all the time. But you huh. can literally graphic build the whole website. You don't need to know any coding knowledge. And so wow. for building a website with your YouTube branding, um, it's super affordable. It's like less than a Netflix account. Wow. Yeah. And what you can do is, if you're an Amazon associate, you can start making posts and have Amazon links in there as well. 
so you can start making money from your your website as well. Wow, that's a lot of really awesome information, man. Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm kind of brain dumping on you. <laughs> I, do all, a yeah. lot. I, I stay very busy. At one point, I was managing 15 websites uh, in the past year, wow. but I downsized because I wanted to put more of the focus on the YouTube channel. So, so do you yeah. enjoy doing it? What's that? Do you enjoy doing your channel? Oh, absolutely. I love it. I, I mean, the opportunities that I get, and um, I, I, I don't want it, this to seem like I'm bragging by any means. I'm very blessed because of what the viewers allow me to do. Mm -hmm. I, I get to go scuba diving. This is These are things that I never thought I'd be able to do growing up in Iowa. Growing wow. up in Iowa, there, just, there wasn't even hardly many lakes. Um, and so I always read all these books. I was like, you know, reading like the treasure Island and all these, you know, adventure stories. And I was growing up in an area where I didn't feel as connected. I, I didn't feel like I could maybe find some of those adventures and everyone's going to have, you know, maybe someone is watching right now and they live in Iowa and maybe they're like, Hey, I'm finding adventures all the time. Yeah. You do what feels right for you. For me, I didn't feel like that was the place where I could find adventures. So when this house came up, I we bought this house. We moved down here. I mean, we bought it sight unseen. And I, I've i just been finding adventures everywhere down here in Florida. And I imagine, I, man. I'd love living down in Florida. Yeah. I mean, I, did, I got scuba certified this year. And... My scuba instructor just so happens to do fossil dives. Uh, we found mammoth bones. We found megalodon teeth. Um, wow. The other scuba buddy, he uh, put his fin in a gator's mouth and uh, almost got drugged down on the Peace River. <laughs> so um, there's tons of adventures. Some make my wife a little bit nervous. Um, yeah. She's not too thrilled about me doing some of them, but I just... I, I love Florida. I love what this channel has allowed me to do. The, the passive income is, is great. You have to put in the time. You have to put in some work. People, there is no get rich quick schemes on YouTube or on, yeah. on the period. Don't get suckered into them. Don't be spending money to make money. You know, there's, there's some of those people where they'll say, oh, you got to buy in to get a start on this uh, make money online deal. Don't do it. The only money that I've spent, really, for the most part, getting this YouTube channel going is my website. That's it. That's, for the most part, all. And then, occasionally, I buy, like, a kayak or I'll buy, you know, something because I, I want to remain non-biased and I don't want to take it from a company, so I'll buy it myself. There, there's just some of those things where, like, those will be expenses. But... For the most part, you should not have to pay anyone to get a start to making money online, doing what you love. How does your website really help you? I mean, with social media and um, YouTube, like I do most of my announcements and most of my um, stuff on my on my Facebook group. What do you do with your, your website that you don't do on YouTube or your uh, social medias? So kind of the same thing. I, I take some of the same stuff. I just started writing a blog occasionally on my on the website and in that blog I put links to the Amazon stuff. So I'm taking the same methods of making money, I'm just doing it in a different way. I got gotcha. you. That makes sense. So my Amazon links will be in the video description on my videos on YouTube, but on my website the .com, they might be blue hyperlinks that you can click that are in the blog. Does that kind of make sense? So Yeah, yeah money in different ways through the same means wow yeah and uh for example some people know I, I do a lot of videos with bixby uh which are these little white motors um they're pretty cool you could they have tons of different mounts and i'm an affiliate with them as well i, I bought the first bixby it was a handheld sea scooter because once again i have that inner drive for adventure and i looked at that i was like that is an adventure machine. Like, I, I want that. So I bought that, and I paid for it. And I made a video down in Key West, and Bixby contacted me and said, hey, we'd like you to become an, amb an ambassador. 
everyone has a different name in the business. Sometimes they call it an ambassador. Sometimes they call it an affiliate. For the most part, it means you're going to make a little bit of commission um, for yeah. helping with sales. And so you'll see on my website that I have a link to Bixby. That also is a means that I make money. I don't ship out anything. I don't touch product. All I do is I make videos showing products being used and enjoying them and people decide if they want to buy them and if they do they usually click the link and it takes them to where they can purchase it and if they buy it i get credit for their sales and wow. that's what helps run the channel so i have no secrets here in terms of how i, I make money from it it basically is if people buy the products that I'm showing in the videos, I typically earn commission from it. So how hard would it be to become an affiliate for like, uh, like Walmart, Bass Pro, Cabela's? 30 minutes. Like what? 30 minutes. 30 minutes, really? Probably, yeah. I mean, I'm pretty sure I'm a uh, Walmart affiliate as well. I'm pretty sure I'm an affiliate for almost all the big department stores. I don't use the Amazon or the, I don't use the, the Walmart one as much um, just because they're not as user friendly. That is one thing you'll find when you're joining affiliate programs. Some are more user friendly than others. For example, Austin Kayak. Everyone knows Austin Kayak. It's like one of the oh, yeah. big places to buy kayaks online. I can actually earn commission from them as well because they're a partner with CJ Affiliates. The CJ Affiliates is a way that you can make money from several different stores. You have to like go into CJ Affiliate, you get a login, and then you find these various stores and you request to become their affiliate. And when you become their affiliate, then you can start looking for their products. For example, if I wanted to link to the new Johnny Boat that's being sold at Austin Kayak, I could go into CJ Affiliate and I could um, do a search for Austin Kayak. So it's searching just their store and then I could search oh. Johnny Boat. And it would show the Johnny Boat and I can create a link and I can share that. Wow. Um, so basically you just kind of got to dig into it a little bit. Yeah. I mean, I might be able to help out some people but I, to be totally honest, if a whole bunch of people message me after this, I can't help out everyone. I, I mean, you got to yeah. trial and error it a little bit. And yeah. that is honestly the best way. Um, if you want it bad enough, it's more than feasible. It really is. I mean, people, uh, I think, just need to start. They need to try. See, I've been working on several YouTube channels, including one based around, like, catching turtles. <laughs> I got one uh, for my uh, Buckeye Kayak Fishing Trail. I, we do um, podcasts for them, and I do YouTubes for them, and I have my buck, my uh, Yak Legion YouTube. And I always thought, man, you had to, you had to get to that point where you got to make uh, um, like a 1,000 subscribers or more before you'd ever see any revenue. So that's amazing, man, with that, that inf the affiliate information. Yeah. So, I mean, really, you can start making money from zero subscribers. Actually, if you do a search on YouTube, you'll find out I have multiple channels. Yeah. I have multiple YouTube channels. I have a YouTube channel where I fix things in my house and I make money from that. I make money off a toilet video. I make money off a shower video. I make money off <laughs> of, you name it. I literally fix my toilet. And I make money off a toilet video. Wow. What are the names of all your channels? So the other channel is like just Justin Lammers. It's just yeah. my name. And a lot of people don't know what my name is. Um, I don't necessarily go out and publicize it, but um, I'm not trying to hide it either. Um, my name is Justin Lammers, L-A-M-M-E-R-S. And I have another channel that just kind of is branded with my name and I do home DIY stuff. Like, so you can take those same principles that I mentioned earlier and you can yeah. apply them into any genre of videos so you don't have to have just one channel you can have a couple different channels i don't recommend putting like a shower and a toilet fixing video on your your kayaking channel yeah you're going to confuse subscribers 
subscribers want to know what to expect from you. My channel has kind of dived off and broadened a little bit. Like I'm doing some scuba diving. I'm doing some skiff rebuilding where I'm fiberglassing. I'm doing that basically to test my subscribers, see what they're interested in. I know the name is Kayak DIY, but ultimately it kind of follows my life and I want my channel to be genuine. So to be genuine, I kind of feel like it needs to follow what I'm doing. Wow. So that's, it, it's kind of a fine line and you'll learn as you go, but you don't want to go too far and too broad outside of your genre. If you're yeah. going to do that, create another channel and upload and create links to those products. What I will say is, if you link to unique products, that's where sometimes you can really make a lot of money. For example, I ended up doing a video about a Bluetooth light bulb speaker on one of my channels. It was kind of weird. People don't know where to buy one. Uh. I made a video about it and it sold a ton every week. Wow. And I get credit for every single thing in their cart at the same time of purchase. So there's times where I can wake up and sold 75 items in a day. Wow, that's awesome. <laughs> yeah, so. And that's how you move the, the floor the, the and then you're there right next to the water. <laughs> the kayaking channel is kind of just a sliver of what you see from me also. I mean, I, I'm kind of just filming every aspect of my life. So. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> what kind of cameras do you use now? Like what, what, what equipment are you using? You know, I'm, I'm a pretty simple guy. I mean, I, I try not to think that a camera will make me better. Mm. I try to treat every camera that I'm holding as a professional camera. And that's something I learned from a few big YouTubers. They said, if you're using a GoPro, treat that GoPro like it's a $5,000 DSLR. You know, yeah. try to try to use it, you know, just try to think of it in that way and try to use it in that way. And that in itself has led to better videos. Um, I use pretty much a GoPro Hero 6 right now. I use my iPhone 7 Plus. Mm -hmm. um, I have a Panasonic camcorder that shoots 4K. It has actually a, a twin cam built into it, like, so it has two cameras. It's, it's pretty crazy um i have one of them i am looking though um if i were starting out again my non-waterproof professional camera would probably be one of two different cameras i would probably either buy right now a canon m50 or i would buy a sony a6500 those would be the two cameras i would be looking at if yeah. i was to be wanting to buy a professional camera and use it for creating videos and then obviously when you're on the water those two aren't waterproof so i would probably have a gopro um, yeah that, that gopro you just can do so many different things with it you can mount it in different ways most of the time i film with an action hat so it's a baseball cap with a mount and you can put your gopro on it and it floats so if i'm kayaking and it comes off my head it floats uh that's those that's the most used uh, mount and, and filming setup that I use is the action hat paired with a GoPro. Wow. I love my GoPro, man. I've done a lot of video with it. <laughs> I like the little mount, uh, the head mount for it. Yeah. That's a lot of fun. So we're going to take a quick commercial break. And uh, when we get back, I'd like to go into some of your projects, man, what some of your favorite projects were, uh, maybe some suggestions on some uh, DIY ideas for people that uh, they're just starting out in kayaking and maybe have the lower end, cheaper Walmart kayaks. Sounds good. Sounds good. All right, man. Let's hear a word from our sponsors.
And here is a word from our sponsors, Venom Lures in Lancaster, Ohio. They're known for their great soft plastics and terminal tackle. They've been providing quality products from right here in Ohio since 1984. Mr. Dustin Carnes is the new owner and inventor of the DK rig. It's a weedless version of the Ned rig that's taken the fishing world by storm. You can check them out at VenomLures.com. Our next one is Strictly Sale. It's located on Kenwood Road in Blue Ash, Ohio. They sell Hobie, New Canoe, Phil Freeze, Three Waters, uh, Johnny Boats, and they've been providing high quality service to fishermen and watercraft. All right, guys, we're back. So, Justin, tell me about some of your first projects, man. Like, what was your first project that you ever did for YouTube that you ever recorded for YouTube? Oh, man. The first project I ever did was putting flush mount rod holders in uh, Old Town Vapor kayak. So a lot of angler kayaks come with flush mount rod holders, and I had bought the recreational model, but I wanted to make it into a fishing model. So I ended up cutting some holes right behind the seat and dropped in some flush mount rod holders, and that was one of my first DIY videos that I did. Wow, man. Um, what's your, how many different kayaks have you done DIY projects on? Oh, man. I've never had anyone <laughs> ask me that, so I'm not actually sure. Uh, this year alone, I've had over 15 kayaks. Wow. Um, so, I mean, I, I don't even know. I couldn't tell you how many kayaks I've done. That what I've do you do with them when you're done? Do you keep them all? No. No, I end up eventually selling them. I keep some of my favorites, which might end up being your next question, I guess, um, what kayaks I keep. But, um, like, for example, right now, I have two Riot Makos. I have the Riot Mako 10, Riot Mako 12. Those are pedal kayaks. They're some of the most affordable pedal kayaks out of the market right now. They start at $1,000. Oh, wow. And I really want to see if a $1,000 pedal kayak can keep up in – do what I needed to do compared to like my $2,000 um, Ocean Kayak Malibu PDL yeah. and maybe some of these other ones. I, I just want to see how it compares. And so I, I, I'm also doing kind of reviews. I'm, I'm testing them out. I'm making videos. I'm trying to show people the speeds relative to my effort in pedaling. Um, in terms of actual DIY projects, just today alone, I was uh, out fiberglassing my skiff. And so I have a budget skiff project that I'm working on. And I ended up getting a fiberglass sponsor, FGCI. He, uh, they ended up sponsoring me with some fiberglass and resin because they liked what I wanted to do. I, basically, what I wanted to do was I wanted to show viewers that this everyday guy that has no fiberglassing experience could tackle a project you know like that and that just like everything i do i kind of just jump in and go do it and i learn as i go and that's what i've been trying to show in the in the channel um so fgci wanted to get behind that and they sent me some resin and fiberglass and i've been fiberglassing my boat recording it as i go and i'll end up kicking out videos on that showing what i've learned through the process and uh i've done tons of, of DIY projects. Um, some of my early ones from when I lived back in South Dakota and Iowa that I remember was I did an LED uh, light pole where I wrapped LED around like a CB antenna and then I heat shrink uh, clear tubing around it and it could light up any color you wanted it to and it was like a visibility light pole. That's awesome. Uh, I also did some live wells. Um, I used Gamma Vittles Vault uh, pet containers. And the pet containers were perfect because they had a nice big hatch on them and they had a nice tight seal. And I made live wells out of those. Um, those became pretty popular. We got some uh, ambulance crews going in here. I'm going to hop inside here a second. <laughs> it's all good. Noisy. The reason well, why I'm going outside for a while is some of my viewers know I have a new baby this year. Oh, congratulations. Um, so, yeah, 
yeah, it's been a lot of fun, quite the adventure. <laughs> oh, there's all kinds of DIY stuff you can do with a baby. <laughs> she already has some uh, some videos, actually. Oh, wow. <laughs> Video a- uh, reviews on Munchkin baby products. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. The way uh, I think she I might got pay little for college. She's... What is it? The way I look at it, she might be paying for her college in the future. Yeah, that's a good way to look at it, man. I know I need to start paying for my kid's college, man. She just turned two years old a couple weeks ago. (laughs) (laughs) It's great, man. Being a dad's the best thing in the world. Best thing, absolutely. Um, But, yeah, I mean, if you get nothing out of this, basically I film everything and I use those same principles um, to make money from it. Uh, The kayaking thing, though, is my passion. Yeah. Uh, Anything water sports is is my passion. Uh, growing up as a kid, I spent 10 years roughly. Uh, my parents had a little trailer home on a lake, and we went up there every weekend. I never joined any sports in school because I didn't want to miss going up to the lake. I didn't want to miss, you know, the opportunities of going fishing. Yeah. Uh, so that's where I got my love for, for being on the water. And that's just kind of transformed into what it is today where – I somehow figured out, I guess, how to make money doing it. Yeah. <laughs> Big ways that I, I make money doing it is exactly what I told everyone here. Um, that's I, I earn it through affiliate programs and I earn it through Google AdSense because I have more than a thousand subscribers. Yeah. Um, but anyone can get a start doing it. <laughs> but oh, I know what we were going to do. My favorite kayaks. Yeah, because that was I, the next people, question. <laughs> people are probably going to want to know that. What yeah. kayaks do I not want to sell? So, uh, number one, the Viking Profish Reload. It's a paddle kayak, not a pedal kayak. Um, yeah. But the reason why I like it, down here in Florida where I'm going out on the ocean, I, I really want a kayak that's sealed well, that cuts through the surf and the waves well. And the Viking Pro Fish Reload has done that very well. It, I don't get any water in the hull um, ever. I, I've never had water get in the hull. I like that the front hatch is easily accessible. I can drop some dive fins in there. Um, I have a big tank well, so I can put like two scuba tanks on the back if I want, if I want to do some spear fishing, um, if I want to do just everyday normal fishing. It has a pod system in the center where I can, you know, pop in a, a sonar pod or um, it has a kid pod where I can have my kid on the front um, in the future. Mm. So wow. it's just a very well-made kayak and the ergonomics for fishing on it are, are top in my opinion. Um, you just got to check it out. Maybe I'll end up doing some videos on it here in the near future again. So that's yeah. one kayak that I refuse to sell. Um, mm. The other one would probably be I really like the Ocean Kayak Malibu PDL, but what I don't like about it, that's actually my wife there. Um, what I don't like about it is I don't like that the rudder wants to wander a little bit. The rudder system wanders a little bit, but I talked to them about it. They said that there's actually a kit that you can buy or that they'll send out, and it fixes pretty much that, and they're putting it on their newer models. So wow. if I get that, that would probably be the second kayak that I really love. Um, it's not really set up for fishing, but doing what I do, I can totally set that one up for fishing. And I like the hull design. The hull design cuts through the water really well. I think that the Ocean Kayak Malibu PDL cuts through the water actually better than the Top Water series. That's my opinion. Yeah. And so I would almost rather make the uh, Malibu PDL into a fishing kayak and put in flush mount rod holders and do some of those things. And I'll have something along the lines of what the top water angler kayaks are. Um, but I think I'll have a more efficient haul. Wow. So those two would be my top kayaks right now. Yeah. You know, the, the pro angler is a great kayak, but it's, it's pretty heavy. And I sometimes have to trek out pretty far. There are good carts and stuff, but sometimes I don't like to mess around with carts. My favorite cart, though, would be a sea tug. Because it just it works great the seat tug to do, um, but the wow. the the pro angler 
I might get one again. I might, but I just remember just about killing myself sometimes having to transport it to certain areas. But it does put a lot of other kayak. You have you have a pro angler, don't you? Yeah, that's what I'm on the pro angler twelve. Yep. Yeah. You know what? I just uh, I just launch from docks. Launch from the boat ramps, you know, and I just got a trailer, so I don't ever have to haul it. I just and, launch it right off my trailer and then go. And I actually bought Robert Fields' uh, kayak trailer. He had a Boondocks kayak fishing trailer. It's yeah. his orange one that you've seen in some of his videos as lock boxes. So uh, that's the thing. I might like the Pro Angler more now that I have a really good trailer for that. Yeah. Um, We'll see. I'm kind of rebuilding my trailer right now. I want to get some lock racks on it, which are those ones that you don't need straps for, and they ratchet in, and it's a kayak. What I like about it is if I'm going on a long trip and I'm you know at a hotel or so, I don't have to worry about my kayak getting stolen because it has a really good lock system on it. So once I get that on there, I might look into getting a, a pro angler again. But um, I like <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I mean, between the the Outback, the the Pro Angler, my Malibu PDL, and probably the Viking, those are some of my favorites right now on out on the market. I'm still trying out the Riot one. Is it going to be better than all those? Not likely. Um, you know, it's more of a budget friendly kayak. There's, you know, it's not made with some of the highest performance hardware and parts. Um, but that, that's the kayak I'm testing out right now, and it, it comes in at a budget-friendly price. I like the I like the Riot Mako 12 hull design because it has a lot of rocker in the front. Yeah. Um, but it's not going to likely be better than the Outback or the Pro Angler. It's just a less expensive kayak for those that want to get into a pedal kayak cheaper. So out of the kayaks I have right now, it's still the Viking it's the Ocean Kayak Malibu, um, and then it's probably going to be the Pro Angler and the Outback that are the top kayaks that I see right now. And in terms of price, if I had to go, you know, looking at just price, though, I yeah. would probably say that Old Town, Johnson Outdoors, Ocean Kayak, they are nailing it, though, in my yeah. opinion. They are delivering the best bang for the buck, in my opinion. Uh for any pedal kayak, wow. that, that that is my opinion based on on trying them out. the The PDL system is phenomenal, and I think that people are really getting their money's worth when they're buying a Johnson Outdoors product, and they're not paying me. I paid for my Ocean Kayak Malibu. They never gave me any any products actually yet. Wow. So. I am on a full I'm, price. <laughs> yeah, so th that's a completely non-biased statement right there. Uh, I think they're nailing it right now with what they're offering. So, what are two? You know, in your opinion, what are two kayaks that you uh, you know couldn't wait to sell? You couldn't sell fast enough. <laughs> um, actually, uh, I had a tandem uh, Old Town Twin Otter, and <laughs> It had no tracking. It was horrible. And uh, in terms of uh, like me and the wife going out, it's literally what I would call a divorce boat. Yeah, um, that's what I've heard them called. Any tandem, any tandem kayak. For the most part, tandem kayaks. If they're a paddle kayak, those are those are ones that, unless you really really can can get in sync and you can paddle well together you and your partner or whoever you're paddling with i don't know i've never had a good experience for the most part on a paddle tandem kayak so those are the kayaks that i keep trying for some reason because i'm a really slow learner but yeah. <laughs> but i try to sell them quick <laughs> <laughs> and sell quick they actually do sell quick because everyone wants to buy a tandem first for some reason yeah so i've always heard bad things about it man and i've seen uh i think a couple years ago i was out on the lake and i seen this old couple in a tandem kayak and it was a paddle kayak and 
Man, they were arguing. The whole time they were out there on the water, I could hear them out there arguing. Now, go this way. You're going the wrong way. Paddle this way. You know, there's, oh, man. I just couldn't imagine me and my wife being out on that thing. Man, we'd be divorced after the first trip. Yeah, no, no. This is where I go and say, though, that pedal tandems actually aren't bad. Because really? you don't get in the way with the pedal, or with the paddle. There's no paddle involved. It's a pedal drive. And even if only one person is pedaling, you can still propel forwards and you have the rudder control. So I've had really good experiences with tandem pedal kayak. So I actually would own a tandem pedal kayak in a heartbeat. Um, for example, the Compass Duo, I think, doesn't look too bad. I, I, I really am kind of interested in it. Um, so the nice thing about it is... Uh, if I go out with my wife and we're fighting a fish, one person can help control the craft while the other one person fights the fish. Yeah, that's a good so, strategy. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, I know, uh, what is it? I think his name's like Kobe, Kobe Blackwell or something. He does tandem kayak fishing. Um, he fishes exclusively from a tandem Hobie. And he does very well from it. He's catching monster fish. But it's because of that strategy of having the other person help um, control the craft while the other person fights the fish. So whoever has the first hookup on the fish, you know, that's the person fighting the fish. The other person reels into the lines and he controls the craft. So I see where there could be benefits, especially, you know, with fighting some of these larger fish. Um, they don't they won't pull you then into, you know, the docks. They won't pull you into, you know. Uh, you know areas where they're going to get tangled up because you have another person that's controlling the craft so, wow. so pretty awesome <laughs> pedal tandems not a fan <laughs> pedal tandems kind of a fan <laughs> so what kind of diy projects have you done with the hobie pa what's something i could do to mine um well, actually, before I even did anything with Bixby and before I became their ambassador, I actually took apart a Water Snake ASP T24, which is a 24 pound thrust trolling motor. Okay. And I drilled a hole through the Hobie plug and I put the shaft of the trolling motor through that and put the head unit back on and I had a motor pod. Wow. And Oh, great. Um, that video, I think, got 160, 200,000 views. I don't know. Um, and that video was very popular. People, a lot of people did it because it's, it's still a really great economical uh, way to have a motor on the Hobie pedal kayaks. Uh, oh. Bixby has, you know, a lighter weight setup because it has the battery and you can run your fish finder from the battery. So, it's just a more refined version, essentially, of what I ended up making. Wow. So, so I had a question for you, too. Um, say, you there? Yep, I'm here. Can you hear Okay. It's getting some interference there. But um, say that you got a newbie kayaker, and he bought his first kayak from, like, Walmart. And I'm talking one of the, the cheap, you know, Walmart brands, like Sun Dolphin, um, just, I saw a pro angler at Walmart, a 12 foot pro angler. But um, what are some things? Maybe these kayaks they get aren't so stable. They're kind of wobbly. I know my buddy got one of them a Sun Dolphins. And man, I think it's awful wobbly when he's paddling around. Yeah. What's some DIY stuff that, that newbies can do that are fairly cheap to help the stability and the comfort of these some of these kayaks? Okay. So. Actually, in terms of, let's start with stability. So if you buy some of those Walmart kayaks, some of them are a little bit narrower haul. Some of them don't have that tri-haul design, which yields a lot of stability. Yeah. So a little tippy. So what I have found is I basically replicated what it was already out on the market, kind of, which Yak Gear makes a, a stabilizer kit that uses rod holders. And I like that idea because then I'm only putting rod holders on the kayak. I'm not putting something obscene that doesn't necessarily work um, from a standpoint of if I no longer want the stabilizers, now I have this weird contraption on my kayak. I have just rod holders. So Scotty Rodmaster 2 rod holders with the Scotty 241 mount. You take the Scotty 241 mount and you mount it on your side gunnel behind your seat. 
Yeah. And what that will allow you to do is you'll be able to drop in the Scotty Rodmaster 2 rod holders, and then you put PVC pipe in those rod holders. And yeah. you put a pin through it, and that holds the PVC pipe. And then using PVC, you put crab pot floats, and that makes your stabilizers. So basically, they're just it, it's rod holders that you can adjust, you know, up and down. Yeah. And those rod holders hold a pipe that has floats on it. Uh, but if you look at Yak Gear, they make a product that has rod holders that basically are, I think they're using Railblazer rod holders now. They previously used uh, Scotty uh, rod holders. Now they're using uh, Railblazer rod holders and they're holding PVC pipe. And on the end of the PVC pipe is just crab pot floats, which are kind of cone shaped. And those, those floats, I think, run about 14 bucks on Amazon. So it's not outrageously high priced and PVC is cheap and easy to work with. So for oh, the most yeah. part, all you're doing is mounting some rod holder mounts onto your kayak on the side gunnels behind your seat. And then you're dropping in the rod holders. You're putting some PVC pipe in there and the PVC pipe has floats attached. That's, that's the easiest way to stabilize the kayak. And I have a video on that actually with a Pelican Castaway kayak. Um, okay. Yeah, oh. it's a 10 foot little castaway kayak and I actually was able to stand up on it afterwards. So pretty cool. Um, the other thing that I would do on a budget friendly like Pelican or a Sun Dolphin, you know, Walmart kayak is you need some way to store your rods and your tackle. So yeah. if, you're, if your kayak doesn't have rod holders, maybe just strap down a crate with rod holders on it. Yeah, that might get you by. Um, if that doesn't get you by and you need to mount some rod holders, um, then I am a fan of Scotty and I'm a fan of the Railblazer rod holders. Those are the two brands of of rod holders that I really, really like. Um, what Have you tried you, Ram mounts? Um, Ram mount just I'm, I'm not a fan only because I've had them kind of get loose. And I think it's when I'm trolling primarily that yeah. I've had issue and i am using my drag but i've still found that the weight of some of my heavy trolling rods makes them want to come loose I, I don't know i can't describe it so even the one and a half inch diameter ball mounts i, I just don't quite trust them yeah okay uh, and speaking of trust i don't trust the railblaze camera boom either the little gray locking mechanism i've almost lost my gopro multiple times so i actually epoxied it together <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> yeah 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 but i like everything else railblazer for the most part thanks but uh what what i would do is i would end up putting a crate mount some rod holders to it and that's what i would do i mean that's how 30 miles out got started that's how you know um zoffinger got started with some of their smaller kayaks that's how I got started, and I'm yeah. still using the crates. I mean, it's not that I just got started and it's no longer good enough for me. Yeah. I still use them regularly because I have all these different kayaks, and sometimes they're not quite set up the way I want. So I grab that crate, I drop it in, and now I have more storage for gear. I've so, got a milk crate in the back of my Hobie, and you see most guys on Hobies have the fancy – you know, the fancy H-Rail uh, crates, and uh, I've seen, like, Yeti coolers back there, and I got the milk crate, and then I got four rod holders. I got uh, their PVC tubes. They got yep. two PVC pipes in each corner, uh, and I just got them um, zip-tied together, nothing real fancy. And it does the trick. I mean, I can hold four rods and uh, tackle boxes inside of them. Yep. Yeah, you can spend as much money as you want to spend. There's nothing wrong with the guys buying the H-Rail crates and stuff, but and there's nothing wrong with the crates themselves. Yeah. Well, pretty practical person. I have a hard time sometimes money when it's something so simple for me to kind of replicate on my So I, I will be the one to buy a milk crate because it's a lot cheaper. Or I'll find a milk crate, which... There are some people that say that if you find milk crate and it says Dean's food on it, you can go to jail, but you're kind of cutting out on me. <laughs> can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you now. So 
yeah, I use a milk crate. Um, that's what I use. I don't get fancy. I don't buy any of those really fancy crate setups. Um, there's nothing wrong with them. If you do, if you have the money and you want something more refined, that's, you know, like the, the plan O V crate, or you want something like that, go for it. You know, um, I, I just, I personally like to build things. That's, that's just who I am. So I yeah. build my own crates and I, I like rigging up my own kayaks. I like having a kayak that's a blank slate. I almost get frustrated when the companies add so much and it's all the stuff I never wanted. And it's like, I didn't want you to drill a million holes in your ki- in the kayak and add all this stuff. I don't want to add the stuff. Please, please just sell me the kayak as a blank slate. <laughs> that's, yeah, that that's should be an option, have. right? <laughs> that's what I want. I want a blank slate kayak that I can rig myself the way I want. And so many people are, so many manufacturers are just throwing stuff on there just for the sake of, I think, trying to sell the kayak. They're like, they're working a hard sell. They're like trying to put all this fancy looking stuff that is not in a practical position, you know, and the ergonomics of the kayak are just way off. Like, it's like, why would I ever have that there? It doesn't make sense. So, um, yeah. That's why I kind of like the H rails on the PA. Cause then you get those uh, H rail clamps and you can move them up and down any different which way man so, so you have to keep drilling holes every new every new toy you get for your kayak you're not drilling a hole for then you just yep. snap them onto your rails and you can take them off if you don't want them on there you know yeah but even myself i like to add the tracks myself ideally but yeah. i will say if a kayak company is going to add anything don't go crazy just put some tracks on the kayak and seal them really well and you should have happy customers that yeah. is in my opinion, what kayak manufacturers can do. Um, I, I hate when they add much more than that because a lot of times I don't need it. For example, the Sun Dolphin Boss, great kayak, I love it, but they put this chintzy cheap rod holder on it. It's not, it's a no name generic, like Chinese looking little uh, rod holder and it's flimsy. And I'm like, you cut a big hole in the kayak to put that there. Yeah. I'm like, just just don't just put some tracks on the kayak and let it be and let me add what i want <laughs> so yeah. that, that's kind of my philosophy on it when it comes to kayak fishing is i prefer a blank slate and if a kayak's going to have anything at least have tracks and then i can rig it the way i want yeah i guess it eats around i kind of like doing stuff myself but i kind of like getting features on my kayak to where I don't have to do a whole lot of work to get it out on the water. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like if I, like when I bought my Hobie PA, like it, I just bought a couple accessories for it. The most, the biggest purchase I made was my fish finder. And uh, with the, the Hobies, they're super easy to install a fish finder. Yeah. They have the through hole uh, thing. They have the low rants ready or the guardian system. Yeah. And so you have a spot for your transducer. That's great. I I'm totally for that type of stuff. Primarily also because Hobie is doing it really well. And a lot of the other big name kayak uh, companies are doing it well as well. Like Old Town and some of those others, Native. Uh, yeah. When they're adding things like a transducer mount, they're doing it well. But you get some of these more affordable kayak companies. They're trying to do what Hobie and some of the other ones are doing. But they're sometimes not executing it out very well. And so in terms of like sealing and the kayak you know, not get filling up with water as much. Mm. I just, you know, if they do it well, great. And they probably know that they're doing it well. But there, I think there's some companies also that know that they're just throwing on a lot of crap kind of to try to sell the kayak. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so, that's true. Yeah. So Hobie's nailing it without a doubt. They're great innovators and they're, they're doing a good job. Um, they're catching a little bit of heck for the the latest pro angler with a five thousand some dollar price tag. Yeah, that's that's a little much. I, I agree with you there. Um, bit, and I am skeptical. I, I you know I like the kiss method. Keep it simple, stupid. That's what my dad always taught me. You know, yeah. when you start going really complex with that three sixty drive and all the gears, I am skeptical. What happens if grit and and rocks and pebbles get in there? How's it going to react? So. Yeah. As much as I like that, and I like how it maneuvered and, and all that, 
I also still kind of like some safety aspects. I like, you know, the redundancy or the, like the simple design, I guess, of some uh, of their other models. So, uh, you know, that's one of the reasons why I have a Bixby on my kayak is if the drive breaks and I have a motor, you know, and like I, I like redundancy, especially being out offshore or, you know, being a long ways away from where I launched. <laughs> so yeah. it makes me a little bit nervous when they made it a little bit maybe too complex, that 360 drive, because it's kind of more to go wrong. But it is really, really cool. Oh, yeah. I, mean, I had the Mirage drive. I had the 360 drive, and that thing's pretty tough, man. And I've seen people true. bend the um, the the paddles on them, but that's about the the worst I've seen on so far with that. Yeah, I'm really excited for their kick up fins, though. Their kick up yeah, that'll be nice. That'd be great, and they're going to be adding that on all their other models, like as a premium. Yeah. So I, I'm excited for that. The 360 drive, though, I love the performance of it. I'm just skeptical. I have nothing to base it on, but I'm skeptical of the over complex design. Yeah. But, well, the more moving parts, the more that can go wrong. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> uh, we'll see what happens, man. I think it'll be good. Yeah. You know, I got faith. You know, I, just like everything, there might be some hiccups at first, uh, some things what? that need to work out. One thing you can guarantee, though, is these big name kayak companies, they'll stand behind it. Um, I've had Hobie stand behind their products. I mean, I know Old Town has stand behind their products. I know Viking has stood behind their products, and they've replaced entire kayaks, no problem. Oh, I yeah. mean, I replaced a Viking that had a, a mold defect, and I literally sent out one email, and I had a brand new one on its way. Wow. So, I mean, these kayak companies, when you're spending more money, even if something does go wrong, they're pretty good about, you know, if it's their fault, if it looks like a general, you know, you were using it, you know, normal, um, they're pretty good about replacing what's needed and servicing it. Oh, definitely. Definitely, man. So uh, before we end this, do um, you got any sponsors, any shout outs you want to give? Shout outs? Um, well, uh, Bixby has been really good to me. Um, they, they've been great. They've helped me go to ICAST this year. And uh, they just they've helped keep the channel running. Uh, Amazon obviously is not necessarily a sponsor. It's just one of the ways I make money, and my subscribers essentially are my sponsors. My subscribers yeah. shop, um, and using my links in the description, um, using my Amazon store, which is Amazon.com/shop/kayakdiy. My subscribers help keep um, the lights on, literally in this house, and they help help me with being able to do what I do. Um, so for the most part, in terms of sponsors, it's it's my viewers. My viewers are my, my number one sponsor. And I have a few other little companies, you know, um, that, you know, maybe give me uh, occasionally free products. Um, but it's my sponsors that, that keep the channel going. Wow, man. It's, uh, That's amazing. Uh, yeah, I it's... mean... So much good information you shared on YouTube tonight. Uh, man, that's that's some golden information. That's probably the best information I've heard off a podcast ever, I think. <laughs> well, like I said, I'm, I'm open to trying to help people, but I am one person. I'm literally one person running everything, the group, yeah. the website. And so it's hard for me to sometimes respond really quick. And if I get a whole bunch of people asking me how to do it, it's going to be tough. Yeah. You know, maybe... I don't know. Maybe we'll chat again sometime about it. <laughs> I got you. Maybe have you have you on the show again and maybe go into more detail. I don't know. Sure. Yeah. Uh, I don't... Maybe let people figure it out themselves. You know. I know I have a few questions I want to ask you. <laughs> Feel free to. Awesome, man. Well, I think I'm gonna wrap up the show, man. I appreciate you coming on. A lot of good information. Uh, you did a good job, man. You do a good job with your channels, and uh, I wish the best of luck to you. Hey, you got a little one. Yeah, this is my daughter. She wanted to come Daddy, in and say good night. Hey. She likes to press buttons. <laughs> All right, everybody. Thanks for listening. Take care.